everybody, my name is Emily Tang, but most people know me as the crazy bag lady, hence all the bags. You can probably spot me in a crowded place just by the number of bags I'm able to sling on my shoulders or lug around on wheels behind me, and I actually take this bag out everywhere I go. And you can probably also hear taxi drivers cursing at me when they realize that it's not the airport that I'm going to, but to a building located just down the road for a meeting. They say one man's trash is another man's treasure. And while the idea of collecting other people's stuff might not seem appealing or glamorous to a lot of people, ever since the age of eight, I've had a passion for trash hunting. I was raised in Jakarta, Indonesia, and while there was definitely poverty all around, there still is, I led an incredibly fortunate life. And it wasn't so much that my parents made it mandatory for me to give, but it was through their actions and their behavior and just watching how they um, interacted with people that deeply instilled in me values about being kind, looking out for one another, and sharing. In today's society, we are an obsessed culture. We are a big bunch that loves to buy brand new things. I, for one, am guilty of it. We buy a lot of brand new clothes. We buy the brand new IT gadget. We even go as far as queuing up for hours just for a brand new IT bag or um, when a fashion collection has launched. Um, a lot of people like to queue up here in Singapore outside the stores. But what happens when um, the trends fade, when you might grow a little larger or you shrink to a smaller size or even when you seem like your closet or your home has just too much clutter? Usually, this is what happens. You kind of go through your wardrobe and you spot something that you never knew you had or you spot something that you wish you never had, but either way you spot something and you go through your stuff and you kind of grab it and you sort of scrunch your nose like I've never worn this in my life and you chuck it out. Or you go through uh, another nook in your house and it could be an old pair of socks and you chuck that out. And the cycle repeats. It could be towels, it could be linen, it could be all sorts of stuff. And the thing is, it's out of sight out of mind, and it's usually out to the dumps. So one man's trash is another man's treasure, but it could also mean one man's trash is still another person's trash. I started Blessings in a Bag, and one of the reasons I started it was because deep down, I think I am a closet hoarder. I get very attached to things. I find it very hard to let go. I'm very sentimental with my items, and so I wanted to make sure that my items weren't going to um, the trash, but would end up as someone else's treasure. So we donate things like school supplies to help kids on the border of Thailand. And Blessings in a Bag is a project that collects new and pre-loved items from the Singapore community, and we distribute them according to needs in the Asia region. So we work with kids, we work with women, and we work with the general community as well. And we collect a whole bunch of stuff, towels, books, school supplies, blankets, linens, you name it, I think we probably collect it all. By definition, giving is to freely transfer the possession of something to someone. And with that in mind, whether we know it or not, I feel like there are some people that participate in what I would call wasteful giving. We often hear about communities or groups of people or even individuals who might have a specific need, maybe, let's say, clothing um, after a major disaster strikes or because of economic downturns. And there are some people who feel that that is the perfect time to give their unwanted stuff. It is the perfect time to them to give us things that are irrelevant, things like dressing gowns, business attire, knee-high boots. And we need to really rethink the things that we are passing on to other people, and we need to really rethink what the items are needed by communities. I also post up on our website and our social media sites things that we collect. For example, we'll collect maybe, we'll say, we need hygiene supplies to help some of the health programs we partner with. So we need things like toothpaste and we need things like soap. But some people end up giving us dodgy looking underwear and we get it very commonly. It comes in a little dirty bag and our poor volunteers have to, or our poor world change agents have to fish it out with their own hands and realize that it is dodgy looking underwear and they have to chuck it out. Um, or we'll post up on our website that we need things like school supplies or children's books um, to help kids like you see on the screen here or also on the border of Thailand. And we get some people who donate 
things that are completely irrelevant or inappropriate for children, and even going so far as to donate things like ferrets for dummies. And so we really need to put more emphasis and focus on the specific needs of communities and the people around us, and also who the person is at the end of the day. Because I feel like the only person who benefits from this cycle of wasteful giving is the donor in the first place. They're able to pat themselves on the back and say, hey, look at me, I've done my good for the end of the year, I've done, I've done a really good deed. And um, at the end of the day, the person who receives the items are kind of like, I don't need these items, I don't even understand it. And their self-worth and the way they, they feel about themselves, their dignity is really called into question. These are some other kids that we work with on the border of Thailand. And for Blessings in a Bag, one of the things that we do is we actually uh, partner with travelers or the tourism industry. So for example, if you're going to a place like Bali, we have a drop-off point that's located right in the heart of Kuta Beach that's open 24 hours. And you can actually take stuff from us for free and just pack it in your extra check-in luggage and you can drop it off at that drop-off location. So we're trying to build up a movement of multiple drop-off sites across Asia. So 365 days a year we do collect here in Singapore. Ever since 2007, um, the average number of boxes, the ten, uh, large boxes that we give out, are um, numbered in 10. And this does not count the number of items that people carry or fly on their trips or the holidays. And so each large box actually holds, on average, 100 sets of clothing, 50 to 100 school supplies. And we always listen and we always communicate with people on the ground and ask them, what do you need and why do you need it? So if they request for things like blankets or linen or hygiene supplies to help with lice, head lice problems, and that's what goes into those boxes. But there is always more that we can do. And I've touched in terms of giving in terms of material items, but what about the intangibles? What about giving in the form of your behavior and how you interact with one another, or even in the form of your time? Because it is said that when you give of your time, you are fully engaged in the work you're doing, you're able to really see and feel the impact that you're making, and you also have a greater sense of fulfillment at the end of the day. And so our World Change agents and our team um, we started a campaign and with the idea that we wanted to spread happiness, spread kindness, encourage openness, and encourage people to get off their smartphones and pl unplug those earphones and actually have conversations with other people and share their stories as well. And so one week of awesome was born. And we didn't really attach it to a specific date or a specific holiday or a celebration. We just decided one week of awesome, it can be any week of the year. So we picked a random week. We basically got people to write pledges, you know, kindness pledges or kindness challenges that they would do or an inspiring word. And we also had a lot of strangers share things uh, such as saying hello to strangers or giving up a seat to the elderly. And other people come down and pledge on Facebook via iPads about how they were going to be kind in society or how they would inspire other people. And with these pledges in mind, we rewarded people with items sponsored by companies. Things like on a Monday morning, just before rush hour, all our World Change agents were stationed at different parts of Singapore as early as 4 a.m. just to be there and meet everybody coming out of MRT stations who were rushing to go to work, very, very grumpy because it's the Monday blues. And we were there with bright smiles on our faces saying, would you like to support kindness? Would you like to inspire someone today? And I must say Monday morning was probably not the best idea to do that. But we tried our best and we offered free cups of coffee to everybody who did stop by and have a conversation with us. And the rest of the week we set up because we realized that Monday mornings are not the best, or mornings, we decided we would change that to lunchtime crowds. And we gave out things like soy milk drinks or canned, canned drinks, and even going so far as to getting our World Change agents bake for two days the most delicious hand-baked chocolate cupcakes ever. And we distributed them across Singapore on that one day um, to reward people for coming up to our booth and to coming, for coming up and joining One Week of Awesome. And it was really great to see the reactions that we were getting from people. We had people from different nationalities and people from different ages basically coming up and sharing how they were going to be kind, how much they loved the campaign, how they wished it could go on on a daily basis. And we were saying, you know, you can be kind on a daily basis. You don't need us to be 
popping up one week of awesome every single week. And that was the whole idea. We hope that people were inspired to do random acts of kindness after um, encountering our world change agents. And it was so great that people were engaged with each other, sharing their stories, sharing, um, sharing their, about their day, and basically talking with one another, which is very uncommon when you're on the trains and on public transport. And it was great to see conversations lasting for more than 140 characters or more than a click of a like button. For one of the days, we also rallied this, the local cycling community. And we felt that since cyclists usually take their bikes out on the weekends anyway, how could we get them involved with a really great cause and to give back to a community? And so we arranged for them to meet us at a local food center. And we told them that we would make a short bike ride to a local housing block that had a lot of elderly people. And they lived in one bedroom flats. They're usually not financially independent. And what we got the cyclists to do before they made a short ride over was to bring something that they thought um, the individuals living in the housing block would not usually have on a daily basis. And the spirit of generosity from these cyclists was amazing. It completely blew me away. We had one guy, totally could not see him doing this, but he came up proudly after he um, rode his bike and he said, I hand-baked all of my chocolate chip cookies for this group of people today. And we also gave them groceries, rice sacks, drinks, soy milk, so that they could have enough to tide them over. And so it was really great to see the cycling community and Singaporeans gathering together for this one week of awesome. Of course, Blessings in a Bag is not just about one week of awesome, and it's not just about um, the cycling community and not just about the Blessings in a Bag movement, about your donations and kind and stuff. We also have many programs. We work with women in need in Myanmar, Philippines, and Cambodia. And we work with them to provide livelihood programs for them to earn a living, send their kids to school, and um, work towards their dreams. We also have a program here that works locally with kids who are um, undergoing treatment for cancer and other terminal illnesses. And we also work with kids facing adversity, whether it's kids whose parents are abusive in some way, or kids whose parents are in prison, or kids who are being bullied for something. And we gather them together for these Love is Loud sessions every month. And we just go over the top crazy. We're world change agents, and we have a lot of fun. Every act of giving and every act of kindness, whether big or small, has the potential to make a difference. And it will make a difference, whether you know it or not. And we need to rethink the way that we're giving. We need to really put the person on the receiving end in focus. And we need to rethink the way that we're being kind and how we interact with one another. And we need to be bold to challenge ourselves to be kind and to have random acts of kindness every single day. So I leave you with this. What one act of kindness will you do this week? Thank you. Thank you.